Picture a time when a simple cut could lead to a serious infection or even death. Can you imagine such a time? This harsh world was everyday life before we had antibiotics. Dying from infections was usual, and sicknesses we now think are small could often kill. Everyday sicknesses like pneumonia, tuberculosis, or a simple ear infection were not just worrying but a matter of life and death. Even having a baby was risky, with many mothers dying from infections after giving birth. The medicines available were few and often didn't work. Doctors could only use basic treatments and hope for the best. Keeping clean was the main way to fight against the constant attack of disease. But these weren't always enough to stop infections from spreading, especially in busy city areas. Without a doubt, people who lived before us experienced a much more dangerous world, where small sicknesses could quickly become deadly. The year is 1928. A left-behind Petri dish in a London lab begins a story that would completely change medicine. Right in the middle of the city, hidden in a corner of St. Mary's Hospital, a young scientist named Alexander Fleming got back from a two-week vacation. As he looked through a pile of petri dishes he'd left, one specific sample caught his attention. A mould known as Penicillium notatum had started to grow and was doing well in a group of Staphylococcus bacteria. But there was a clear area around the mould where no bacteria seemed to live. This was no usual mould, Fleming figured out. It was a fighter, a quiet protector in a hidden battlefield, pushing away the enemy bacteria with a substance that was yet to be known. Fleming, with his sharp eye and wandering mind, decided to separate this substance, a choice that marked a big change in the history of medicine. He called the substance penicillin. And soon enough, the world would learn to know it as the first antibiotic. The importance of this finding was huge. Before this, bacterial infections often meant death. Simple sicknesses like pneumonia, tuberculosis and scarlet fever took many lives. But with penicillin, a new tool was used in the fight against bacteria. It was the start of a new time, a time where surgeries became safer, where bacterial diseases lost their power, where people lived longer and the quality of life got better. Fleming's finding didn't just change how medicine worked, but how human history went. Still, Fleming was a modest man. He saw himself not as a smart person, but a good watcher who had been in the right place at the right time. He recognized the role of luck in his finding, saying, When I woke up just after sunrise on September 28, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to change all medicine by finding the world's first antibiotic or bacteria killer, but I guess that's exactly what I did. So it was that from a left-behind Petri dish, a new hope came up for all people. Fleming's discovery really changed the world. We're going to look at a time that changed how we do medicine. The time when we started using antibiotics. Fleming found out about penicillin by accident in 1928, and this discovery got us ready for big changes in medicine, but we didn't make lots of it until World War II. During the war, soldiers weren't just dying from being shot, but also from infections from their injuries. Too many people were dying, so we needed to find a solution quick. That's when penicillin came in. We started making lots of this wonder drug, and it started doing amazing things, saving so many lives. But was just the start. The fact, fact that we could now fight back against infections made people want to find out more. Scientists all over the world started looking for more antibiotics. What did they find? Lots of drugs that saved lives, like streptomycin, tetracycline and erythromycin, each with their own special ways of working. These finds had a big effect on how we do healthcare. Infections that used to mean certain death could be cured. Pneumonia, tuberculosis, blood poisoning, illnesses that used to scare us a lot could now be beaten. They were so big that for a while some people thought we had beaten infectious diseases for good. With the start of antibiotics, people started living longer. They were healthier and lived longer lives. People weren't scared of small cuts becoming big problems. The time of antibiotics brought a new day. A day where people were winning against diseases caused by bacteria. In a world using antibiotics, diseases that used to be deadly could be treated. And because of that, people started living longer. And just like that, the antibiotics change, started by simple mould, forever changed how we look after our health. But as we would find out, every big change has what comes after.
but we'll talk about that another time. But just like every good thing, there's always a bad side. When we started using antibiotics, new popped up. With antibiotics, we were quick to use this new power over disease, but we forgot something important. Bacteria are living things, and like all living things, they want to live. This has led to bacteria changing to resist the drugs meant to kill them. This resistance to antibiotics isn't just a small problem, it's a ticking time bomb. Every year, millions of people all over the world get infections from bacteria that antibiotics can't kill, and lots of these infections lead to death. Our habit of using too much antibiotics and using them the wrong way has sped up this problem, making our miracle drugs into potential bombs. Plus, using too much antibiotics when we don't need to is a big problem. We often use antibiotics when they don't help, like for the common cold, which is a virus. This not only makes the problem of resistance worse, but also can cause bad side effects and cost a lot of money. What's more, we use antibiotics too much in farming, in the feed for animals to make them grow and not get sick. This can leave bits of antibiotics in our food, which might make humans more resistant. But it's not all bad news. By using antibiotics the right way, we can slow down the spread of resistance and make sure these drugs that save lives stay useful. This means only using antibiotics when a doctor says so, taking all the medicine and never sharing or using leftover antibiotics. Farming. People are trying to use less antibiotics, with many countries making rules to limit their use in raising animals. As we look to the future, we need to remember what went wrong in the past and use antibiotics the right way to make sure they keep working for future generations.